Baseball just north of downtown Los Angeles. A couple of undefeated teams getting set to do battle. Welcome to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Ram Trucks. This is the Pac-12 on ESPN. Inside the Rose Bowl, Washington comes to town. The undefeated Huskies at 4-0, ranked inside the top 15, getting set to battle. UCLA, the Bruins, also undefeated. With Andre Ware, I'm Roy Felpot. So great to have you with us. Paul Carcaterra joins us on the sideline in just a couple of minutes. Two undefeated teams. Yeah. Last night of September, week five is here. It feels right tonight at the Rose Bowl, doesn't it? Uh, we couldn't wait. We, we had this one circled weeks ago, and both teams have played some outstanding football. We're going to get some great great quarterback play as well. Yeah, if you like offense, you found the right game tonight, a little Pac-12 after dark. Let's start with the visitors from Seattle. Michael Penix, the top passer in America coming into this week. Yeah, he's the best quarterback right now in the entire country. The guy can spin it like nobody else in the country. Throws dimes all over the field, whether it's short, medium, or long range, and he can make some plays with his legs as well. Still has some mobility talk about Penix you have to talk about Dorian Thompson Robinson DTR career start number 40 tonight dual threat can beat you in a number of different ways he's like Chip Kelly on the field yeah he seems like he's been here forever but now in his fifth year on campus knows this offense like the back of his hand he can deliver it when it threw in in a crowd he can make plays with it You ready for UCLA and Washington, a pair of undefeated teams. Andre Ware, Roy Philpott, Paul Carcaterra on the sideline talking about UW's first year head coach. Well, Roy, when you think about Washington, you got to think about them hiring a no brainer in Kalen DeBoer, a total winner. And when you think about his roots, it all goes back to one place, South Dakota. He grew up on a farm in South Dakota where hard work was never compromised. Roll up the sleeves and get it done. He later attended the University of Sioux Falls where he was a two-sport superstar, record-breaking wide receiver, and hit almost 500 in baseball. DeBoer coached his alma mater and won three NAIA national championships in four years. His staff, numbers-wise, was a fraction of his current staff, but that allowed him to tap into his entire team. And when you talk to anyone about this guy, they'll tell you he's a man of the people. Very well said, genuine in our conversations with him this week, off to a 4-0 start. Good run at Fresno State, called plays at Indiana. Now trying to turn things around in Seattle. So far, so good. UCLA won the toss and deferred. And R.J. Lopez sends it deep. Our first look, Michael Penix, the transfer from Indiana. Committed to play for the Huskies December 14th last year. And now that he's healthy, Andre, number nine in purple and white tonight. Set to make his triumphant return here in the Pac-12 and try to get things cooking again for this UW offense. You see everything in that left column. Leading the nation in passing and touchdowns. Only one interception, pass yards. First season at Washington, but not his first go around with Kalen DeBoer who is the head coach, was the offensive coordinator when they were both at Indiana. Wayne Talapapa joins Penix in the backfield on first down. Dunze goes in motion, deep get. Talapapa sandwiched between two defenders. Gabriel Murphy met him first for the TFL. Talapapa's going to give him a running game. They go about 60 to 60-40 in terms of pass to run not run to pass but this is a pass first offense that will light up the skyways with Michael Penix Jr's arm second and 11 the pass numbers speak for themselves up to this point fake the handoff Penix on the move fires that pass high and out of bounds looking for Odunze coming off a career performance in the win against Stanford third down and long Pressure from Gabriel Murphy, one of the transfers from North Texas. He and his twin brother Grayson transferred in here, and they have really, really helped this UCLA defense. First big test for the Bruins this year. Comeback win against South Alabama. Open automatic just about on 
in third down situations, over 50% in conversion percentage this year for the Huskies. And a timeout call by the Huskies. The clock's getting a little low and decided to go ahead and take a timeout rather than have the wrong play dialed up or try to rush into a situation. second timeout. So Kalen DeBoer now will talk things over with his quarterback and his offense. Third down and long upcoming. Now Kalen DeBoer, we mentioned the stops in Fresno. Indiana State, or Indiana rather, Fresno State. How about the arrival? It seems like something magical happens almost right out of the gates. He's just a winner. Everywhere he goes, the program seems to get turned around, and it's no different at Washington. Four and eight a year ago, he comes in as a head coach, undefeated coming into tonight's game. He's already matched the win total posted by the Huskies a season ago. Papa motions out on third down. Too high safety look for the Bruins. Time for Penix. Pass will be caught. That's enough to move the chains. Odunze continues his good work. Damn. And a first down. What you like about that, Roy, is Odunze gets to the first down marker or past it. So when he makes the catch and immediately goes down, he's already got the yardage necessary. So a lot of young receivers don't do it. How to get to the first down marker when you make the catch you already you already have the first down pick up now on third and 11 a gain of 13. Talapapa right through the a gap in the plus territory and that's a first down another pickup of 15 yards a lot of Virginia fans are familiar with Wayne Talapapa doing exactly that big hole opening in the middle of the formation and he did it for a number of years at Virginia before transferring to Washington and boy he has been some addition to this offense and originally committed to BYU with Bronco Mendenhall in Provo switched to Virginia when he left Went on a two year Mormon mission to Nicaragua for starting his college football career Odunze in motion Halapapa off the left side, plunging across the 45, and that'll be a gain of four on first down. Did Ryan grew up kind of lull us to sleep, you know, 60 40. Uh, we like to throw it around, and seems to be a high dose of Wayne Talapapa here on this first drive. Really trying to settle UCLA in and maybe lull them to sleep to think, hey, we got to keep defenders in the box, and then that's going to open things up later as this game progresses for Michael Penix Jr. in the passing game. Yeah, three touches for 21 and White Talapapa already. Most 20 yards on the ground. Four man front for the Bruins on second down. Methodical start for the Huskies on the road. Their first road game of the season in the flats to Westover. And Blaylock shoves him out of bounds. Good enough for a first down, a six yard game. Well, what's the block of Wayne Talapapa? Three, a three down back, and in all three phases can affect a football game. Picks up the blitz coming off the edge to give Penix enough time to shoot the ball out for a first down. That's excellent work. Impressive start for Washington. Seventh play of the drive coming up. Cameron Davis checks in for the first time at running back. Fake it into the boundary. High pass is caught for a short game. Jalen McMillan will be stopped at the 35, a two-yard pickup. And he's already had two 100-yard games for this offense, and they can get it. Adunze, as you talked about, McMillan, got Giles Jackson, and Polk on the other side. They are very, very deep, as talented as anybody in the country at the wide receiver position. Richard Newton now running back out of the pistol set. And off the screen, Giles Jackson quickly corralled after another short gain of two. It'll make it third down and long. Bo Calvert got there first. Another third down situation here mentioned earlier. They're over 50% on the year. It's first in the Pac-12 and 11th in the country at about 51.8%. You're going to win a lot of games 
and you can convert on third downs of that percentage. Doing it against pretty good competition. Michigan State and Stanford. Wins in the last two weeks for Washington. Play clock running down. Penix has to hurry. Just got it off. Clean pocket. Penix. McMillan. End zone. And incomplete. Hearn was in coverage working against Jalen McMillan. And Hearn was right there. Excellent coverage by Hearn on the back end and just fought tooth and nail. Kind of surprised you that Penix decided to go up top and it's man across the board. McMillan had a chance early in this and ball hits his hands. Almost came up with it, but Hearn an excellent position. Fourth down and they're going for it. Caught in no man's land. A good week last week for Peyton Henry, the place kicker. His career long of 47 yards achieved against Stanford. Penix wants it all to the end zone for the touchdown. Odunze the score. They get it in a variety of ways, whether it's Odunze, McMillan, who had the incompletion to play before. Jackson has caught a screen. They spread it around, so you, you, you have no idea who's going to do it. Three different receivers in the first four weeks have gone for over 100 yards. And the Dunes, they just beats coverage, just gets behind Kirkwood, the defender, and Penix adds touchdown pass number 13. On fourth down and six, a 33-yard scoring strike. Michael Penix to Rome Odunze. Time out. Odunze, man-to-man coverage. Penix identifies it, uses the eyes. It's 7-0 Huskies. Huskies on the road for the first time in 2022. Off and running, Michael Penix, another touchdown toss. And it is 7-0 Odunze getting the job done just like he did a week ago against Stanford. Kashmir Allen from inside the five. With an alley. There goes Allen and tripped up by the shoestrings. Two late penalty markers fly near the 40. And it's going to come back, maybe a block in the back. It's going to back it up right around the 35-yard line. And a couple of officials threw flags, so they both had a chance to see it at the same time. During the return, personal foul, tripping, kicking team number 95. Oh, wow. 15-yard penalty to be added at the end of the return. First down. I think Coach DeBoer would be okay with a trip over and take the penalty yards over the touchdown. And I mean, just trying to split and the kick, the kicker actually just kind of hangs that leg out there and trips him up. But he, otherwise, he's gone. So you take the 15-yard penalty over the six points any day of the week. 40-yard return plus the infraction. UCLA starts off its first drive of the night in Washington territory. And they'll empty the backfield for Dorian Thompson Robinson. They'll try to match his high-powered Husky offense with some stuff of your own. Camp Brown in motion. Charbonnet now. They'll run an option play to lay toss. Charbonnet. Probes his way towards the 40. Gain of three on first down. The tackle by Alex Cook. All the, the uh, love we gave to Tyler Papa, I think Zach Charbonnet, Charbonnet is just as talented. Had fun watching him on film. Transfer from Michigan. Little flip pass out in the flats. Allen corrals it and then gets shoved out of bounds near the line of scrimmage. Jordan Perryman, who's now healthy, that's a good sign for the Huskies. Credited with a stop that time. That's a base of 4 2 5. And just two linebackers, five defensive backs, but they have a lot of speed at a lot of different positions on the defensive side of the football for Washington. New weapon for head coach Chip Kelly and Dorian Thompson Robinson this year in the slot right now. And Jake Bobo transferred from Duke, led the ACC in receptions a season ago. He's big time now. Big time player. Going to play on Sundays. Bobo on the crosser, makes the grab, and then some. Bobo into the red zone, slung down at the 18. Right on cue. He's one of the team leaders 
after transferring in, as you mentioned, from Duke. A little in route, and he sets the defender to the outside, and what you like about it is the flat break. That's the difference in getting open and being covered. When Thompson Robinson backside pressure, end zone and incomplete after the gain of 22. It'll be second down and 10. We're trying to go to Cam Brown. Another transfer from Texas A&M. And he had a big time grab last week in traffic. Numeral zero Cam Brown. Chip Kelly talking with us yesterday after practice indicated that Dorian Thompson Robinson they'll text back and forth all week long talking about ideas and plays play action here off the back foot passes incomplete again trying to spot Bobo and in coverage was Dominique Hampton just not enough on the football his nose is tailing towards the ground it's because he's rolling left right-handed quarterback that is a tough tough throw Quickly third down and 10. First possession of the game for UCLA. The undefeated Bruins at home. This is when you can expect a little blitz here from the Huskies. Offensive line holds up plenty of time for Thompson Robinson. That's right at the line to gain. Cam Brown brought it in, and that will be enough to move the sticks. It'll be first and goal. And a linebacker, Cam Bright, thinking about coming, and he got washed out, and that gave. Dorian Thompson Robinson time. Charbonnet straight ahead. Still plunging four. He'll be stopped near the three. A four yard pickup on first and goal. Braylon Trice got there. Yeah, we were talking about him earlier. He is just a, a phenomenal three down back in his own right. He's enough power to take on defenders, but when he gets in the open field, he can shake them as well. And he, and he goes about 6'1, about 220. Runs with some power, but boy, does he have some open field moves. Broke two big time runs last week against Colorado. Colorado. Bruins coming off the road win in Boulder. Second down and goal. Rush yardage has been there this season. Play clock winding down. They'll fake the jet sweep off the back foot again. The floater back corner is incomplete. Nice job of getting in the face of him Did Jeremiah Martin off back. the edge and that forces the, the throw out of bounds fortunately for for Duran Thompson Robinson he had enough on it even backpedaling to just throw it away and make sure the ball got out of bounds it felt dangerous didn't it, it? it did for a minute I thought a defender was going to have a chance to make it Perriman Jordan Perriman on the back end would have a chance to uh, to get to it but it was well thrown and out of bounds. And we'll bring up Perryman's name again. He was out last week in that win against Stanford at home. Now healthy, that is critical for Washington's defense. Third down and goal. Bobo back corner. Never saw it. Really didn't turn around. And Dorian Thompson Robinson sent it on that back shoulder on the right side. Yeah, he just threw it a bit too wide. If he throws it to the back shoulder where it's normally thrown, Perryman is too far inside to make a play on this. But way outside, he's expecting Bobo a little bit farther outside the number or the goal line G there. Fourth and goal from inside the five. The metrics cheat sheet will tell you. In a game like this, you probably need to go for it. We saw we saw Washington do it on fourth down. So UCLA says, hey, we got we got to play in our bag as well. Sykes motions in. Dorian Thompson, Robinson flings it. Nobody's home. The pressure got there. And on fourth and goal, the Huskies defense stands tall. Braylon Trice. It's their best pass rusher coming up at the most important time in that drive. Braylon Trice turning the UCLA Bruins away. ESPN College Football is presented by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Well, one of the great venues in all of sports. That's the original locker room, then turned into a storage room until 2017. They made it now a small museum honoring this great facility. And of course, on the verge of celebrating 100 years. Rose Bowl first opened October 1922. Four BCS championship games, three playoff contests, five Super Bowls. Andre, where well, did you ever play here? No, I wish I had him, though. Especially, we were talking about 1988 was probably our, our best team, you know, so I'd like to have come out 
played the Bruins with that that group. No Chip Kelly goes for it on fourth and goal. Comes up empty. The second leading sack artist in the Pac-12 in Trice forced the incompletion. Huskies get it back. Talapapa off the left side. Two yard gain crossing the five, and that's it. John John Vaughn's got there. Yeah, a lot of production on that first drive by Penix. He was five of seven, 56 yards, and obviously the touchdown pass, but he hit four different receivers. And to our point, where you can't you just don't know where it's coming from with this Washington offense. They attack you in a variety of ways, and all all the receivers are equally as talented. I'm anxious to get your opinion as well on Penix. He leads the nation in passing coming into tonight, the I'll start you, of week five. I can tell you right now, if we if I had to cast a vote for the Heisman, it's for Michael Penix Jr. All right, that right, just went viral right, on Twitter. Right this minute. Okay, interesting. File that one away. Ball pops out. Back in the end zone, and that should be a safety. Let's see where they spot it. And indeed, that's two points for the Bruins. Dallas Papa just didn't handle the pitch. Right there, maybe trying to get a head start on things and let it get on the ground and and what a gamble by ucla going for it on fourth down having a pendants pinned down inside the five yard line and a mistake cost you two points leatu latu has been electric this season for the bruins defense leads the pac-12 and zach's talapapa couldn't corral it two on the board Let's take a look at our player to watch tonight brought to you by Dave and Busters and we talked about him on UCLA's first possession the transfer from Duke Jake Bobo. Yeah he's a team leader you mentioned it he led the ACC in receiving a year ago he can beat one on one coverage we've seen that already and love to move him around a lot and get the ball in his hands and after the catch he can make something happen. Already four targets tonight the one catch. What 22 kick. yards. Free kick coming from the 20. Allen retreats all the way back to the five. A little confusion there on the low kick that Karam deep into UCLA territory. And the Bruins will take over deep on their own end of the field. Well, don't forget coming up tomorrow night, a top 10 ACC clash. NC State on the road in Death Valley. Tigers have been nearly unbeatable there since 2016. Devin Leary. Hopes to change that primetime tomorrow night, 7.30 on ABC, also on the ESPN app. 36 consecutive wins, just one shy of the all-time ACC record held by Florida State. Oh, what a kick to get it down here inside the 10-yard line of UCLA. Charbonnet, the running back, play action. They'll flick it to Habermel out in the flats, the tight end. Goes out of bounds just short of the 10. Braylon Trice in the area. He is a smooth athlete. Didn't weigh a lot when he got to campus, but he has filled out perfectly at 6'6, 252 pounds. We met him yesterday. He checked in originally at a buck 70. <laughs> That's amazing. Inside give to Keegan Jones. Crossing the 10 ahead to the 12. Stop there quickly. It's third down. Cam Bright got there first, a four yard pickup. Jones is kind of their change of pace back. They like to use him on third downs. Excellent receiver out of the backfield. Second possession for the Bruins in a seven to two ball game. I mean, we're almost in October. It does have a baseball kind of feel to it when you give a score like that. Third down and four. Into the backfield. William Thompson, Robinson, plenty of time. There's Bobo again. Another big gainer. Lasso from behind into Washington territory. A gain of 38, and it was Alex Cook that went for a ride. Boy, just the, the route running. He's an excellent route runner. And watch him flat. He flattens the route off where the defender just doesn't have a chance to get between the, the receiver and the football. Excellent route. Play action into the flats and ahead to the 42, and that's it. 
keep in mind, guys, this is DTR's fifth year with Chip Kelly. He told me when he was a freshman, he was just a football player, and he took a lot of licks. Now he's a quarterback responsible for the entire offense, and he changed his eating habits, his sleep habits as well. He said that's been the biggest game changer. As a freshman, he's getting six hours of sleep now, between 8 to 10. He's fresh. He wakes up early every single morning, attacking the day, and he has evolved as a quarterback. I want some of that energy. Cam Brown after the gain of six. No sleeping there. I'm going to try to. Reception by Loya. Logan Loya gets his hands on the football for the first time in a gain of 11. Yeah, we're talking to Chip Kelly about Dorian Thompson Robinson. He said he learned he's learned how to let it happen rather than not, not trying to make it happen. So he's letting the game come to him and taking what the defense is giving him and not trying to force it the football in, in too many situations. Charbonnet straight ahead. We did have an in-depth conversation about sleeping habits <laughs> with Ch Coach Kelly. Chip yesterday. can educate you on a lot of stuff, man. He, he's changed a lot of programs from on uh, Thursdays for a Saturday game. It's more of a walkthrough on Thursday, and then they ramp it up on a Friday. Well, yesterday was kind of their Friday practice where they go up-tempo a little bit and get a good sweat, and he says it just kind of carries into game day the next day. Thompson Robinson four for four on this drive before that incompletion leads the Pac-12 in completion percentage at 74 percent. I believe that was tipped at the line. Two we got there. And he's been playing some really really good football. Oh the end we talked about Braylon Trice as well Jeremiah Martin on the other side. We've all made some plays in this game. It was Tui Tele got the mid on it third down and eight. Bruins win for it on fourth and goal earlier. And keep an eye on number nine for UCLA. Jake Bobo. Pass is caught, first down. And that will be first down and goal for the Bruins. Titus Mokiao Atimalala in a gain of 21. And he is a weapon transfer in from UCF. But when you look at Dorian Thompson Robinson throw the football, I, I think he. He surprised me yesterday the way he can spin it. We know that Michael Penix Jr. he can spin it, but this kid can go as well. Personal foul, targeting, defense number 13. That play is under further video review. Fabicu Lannon, Cameron Fabicu Lannon, the sophomore, playing in that Husky secondary. And we'll take a look. We do have our rules expert, Matt Austin, with us tonight as well. And Matt, when you look at that sequence, what is your early indication on the targeting call? I, I don't see the crown of the helmet contact here that we would need to have targeting. The, it's not a defenseless player. He's running with the football, so he's a runner. That number 13 coming in would have to hit him with the crown of the helmet, and I, I just don't see it. He might come in with, there might be some side of the helmet, but I think mostly the shoulder pad gets into the runner's helmet, so I don't see targeting here. Gary Nignana is our replay official tonight. Bang bang play along that far side. It'll be first and goal for the Bruins, regardless of the call. After further video review, there is no target on, on the play. The contact was legal. First down. Matthew Matthews leading this veteran pack 12 of the year early. Yeah, that's a good sign. Good sign. Yeah, absolutely. Bruins on the move, trailing 7-2. to And they got stingy down here. The last trip inside the red zone for UCLA. So first and goal at about the eight-yard line. And this is a defense that put together eight sacks last week against Stanford. They were vicious. Charbonnet and Nifty move deep in the backfield. Powers his way down inside the two. Well, that's what I'm talking about. He, he is just... He runs angry. And then all of a sudden, when he's in the open field, he can throw a move on a defensive back and just flat out freeze him. But through the line of scrimmage into the second level, boy, he is something else. You want to feed him here again? Absolutely. That's what they'll do off the left side. Second effort comes up just short. And he's right outside the goal line. And guess what I'd do again? Feed him again. There's no doubt about it. Let him run behind this big offensive line. 
or three times last week on the road. Four touchdowns on the season for Zach Charbonnet. Carson Bruner with some great penetration to slow Charbonnet down. Last time they had it first down and goal, three incompletions. This time staying on the ground. Charbonnet straight ahead for a touchdown. Well, that's one way to do it. A great block right in the middle of the formation by Duke Clemens, number 62, the center. Had to clear things out. He calls all the, the stuff up front for the offensive line. He's going to throw one heck of a block inside to free it up and allow Charbonnet to walk into the end zone. It's just how you draw it up right there. Nicholas Barmira on for the point after. Now Chip Kelly rolled the dice on fourth and goal, came up empty. Two plays later, a safety. And how about a 93-yard touchdown march for UCLA after the safety? And the Bruins have their first lead. An interesting start here in the Rose Bowl tonight. And it was a heck of a kickoff to get it inside the 10-yard line. Well, Chip says, hey, no problem. We're just going to go right down the field. A big, big completion to Jake Bobo that got it all started and gave UCLA excellent field position. Don't forget about our featured ESPN Plus college football games tomorrow. Quarterback Donovan Smith leading the Red Raiders into Manhattan to take on Deuce Vaughn in number 25, Kansas State. Wagner at undefeated Syracuse. The Orange knocking on the door of the top 25. Eastern Washington and Florida. Don't forget that game moved to Sunday at noon on ESPN Plus. And already be in the top 25. Syracuse. Why not? I mean, that's a good football team, a, a deep football team on both sides of the ball. We got a chance to see him last week. We Garrett Schrader, you loved him. Loved him. Good quarterback and, and is a perfect fit for that system. I don't know why, actually, why UCLA wouldn't be a top 25 team. I think the close comeback win against South Alabama here was a last uh -oh. second field goal. Oh, you know, that was that part was, of it. I mean, you, you're going to play some teams that obviously get up for you and you're going to be involved in some tough football games with undefeated undefeated and that's a good team too yes the so out of the touchback Mike Penix back on the field leading passer in America transfer from Indiana suffered all the injuries two ACL tears the yeah. AC joint separation clavicle there's been a shoulder I mean all the different things that have happened in his career but he's proven when healthy, he can be one of the top passing quarterbacks in the country. Well, I'd argue that this is the best offensive line that Michael Penix Jr. has played behind. And so he's been upright, has yet to be sacked this season. Did you ever have a four-plus game stretch without getting sacked at any level of football? Oh, boy, I, I don't think so. <laughs> because I probably put myself in harm's Time way. Out. Washington, they're second at the half. protect myself with a line call at some point, you know, and all of a sudden there's a, a free rusher. Well, there's something to be said about that because Penix has not done that right. up to this point against a schedule that features Michigan State, Stanford. And don't forget about Kent State way back in week one, a team that challenged Georgia somewhat a week ago in Athens. I mean, he is, he did some work last week against Stanford, throwing for over 300 yards. He's done that, I think, every, every time out this uh, this season look at his numbers compared to some of the other top quarterbacks the Heisman favorites I mean they're right there if not better of course in the yards per game department through the air so I said if I had to vote today my vote would be cast my first place vote would be cast for Michael Penix Jr. that's coming from Heisman Trophy winning quarterback Andre Ware it means a little bit more we get a vote <laughs> <laughs> just in case you, someone was wondering on first down, all night to throw for Penix. And a tough ball floats out of bounds looking for Odunze. Roy, you're mentioning Michael Penix and all the injuries. When I spoke to him this week, I asked him about that and asked him if it really makes him hesitant in terms of, of getting nicked up. He said, absolutely not. He's a football junkie. He loves the game of football. When he's out on the field, it is all out. The injuries are something in the past, but it helps to have an offensive line like this. This guy has the best protection that you could ask for. His teammates just flat out love him and his leadership skills as well. Five wide on second down. McMillan has it crossing the 30. We third 
and medium as Vaughn's brought him down quickly. And the quick release. I mean, it, it is out of his hands. And, and there are times when you're watching film of Michael Penix Jr. that you cannot see the white lines on the football because the ball is spinning so fast. Pressure. And jumping across the line of scrimmage. It's going to give him a free first down. Yeah, it was UCLA, and that came quickly from Muasau. Trying to time a blitz. Offside. Defense number 53 with contact. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. An instinctive player, and that should be enough for the first down. It was third and less than five, so indeed they'll move the chains. Yeah, Bill McGovern told us he's kind of the heart and soul of this defense, so to have him jump off sides like that is kind of unexpected. Yeah, Bill McGovern coming in from the Chicago Bears, coached with Chip Kelly during his time in the NFL with the Philadelphia Eagles. We had a good conversation with yeah. him yesterday. Enjoyed our visit with him. Empty backfield, late penalty flag after the snap, crossing the 40. Is Will Nixon out of the backfield? So he jettisoned out quickly. We'll check the infraction. Matthew Richards, again, our official tonight, head referee. Offside. Defense in the neutral zone as a snap. Number 12, five yard penalty. Still first down. Grayson Murphy that time, Andre. Just a little bit. You see him lining up offsides. His brother Gabriel forced a, the ball out of Michael Penix Jr.'s hands a little earlier, but they are the other, the twin brother, the other brother, is a little bit uh, offsides there. You got twins that are offsides. <laughs> Penix, quick toss, Westover got to the edge on first and five. Will pick up six. Well, we've talked so much about this receiving core for Washington that you forget they've got two very talented tight ends in Devin Culpin and there Jack Westover. You love that as a quarterback when they forget about your tight ends, right? Yeah, absolutely, because you've got two guys that could absolutely work the middle of the field at any point in time, and, and it's going to be available to you because the other guys are doing their jobs. Quick toss in the flats. Odunze diving down makes the reception. Pickup of eight yards. The pressure came in quickly for Murphy, Grayson Murphy. And he, Michael Penix Jr. took a shot from Grayson Murphy. Trying to make up for that neutral, neutral zone infraction. And he put a big time hit on Penix. That's part of the chess match in this game to see if Penix can finally be pressured but for the he, first time this and season. He, he stood right in there and just threw an absolute strike. Huskies on the move after the safety. Pitch was dropped in the end zone. And another first down. Davis scampering inside the 35 with Humphrey finally bringing him down. 10 yard game. Now, watch the ball. The ball comes out so fast that the, it's going to beat the blitz. You got the perfect scenario called up where you get a guy waiting on the football. In Cameron Davis, and the ball's right there as the blitzers arrive. They've thrown it on every play of this drive. That'll continue here. Late flag. Yeah, I think it's going to be a hold here. It's one of these offensive linemen for Washington, so it's going to back up Holding. 10 yards. Offense number 55. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Fautanu, as Latu came quickly, racing towards Penix. He's been a factor early, number 15 for the Bruins tonight. He's been a factor all year long in four straight wins. But it really shows you the maturity of Michael Penix Jr. in turn when he's facing blitz. And UCLA has decided we're going to sell out and uh, and see if our back end can hold up. And he doesn't flinch. Ball comes out. It's on time. Not taking sacks. Penix trying to set up the middle screen, and they will on first down and 20. Devin Culp makes the reception, crossing the 35, a nine-yard gain in a play that took a little bit too long to develop, but it worked out. That's one of those big tight ends. Culp, the 6'4 tight end, is just climbing the ladder to make a nice play. 15 minutes in the books. We've got a good one in the Pac-12, highlighting the top two offenses in the conference. Nine to seven, our score.
Don't forget you can help people affected by Hurricane Ian. Donate at redcross.org slash ESPN to help the Red Cross prepare for, respond to, and help people recover from this disaster. Your donation enables the Red Cross to help all those impacted by the devastating storm in Florida, making its second landfall in the continental United States earlier today in South Carolina. Well, prayers go out to all that are affected by, by the hurricane. Start of our second quarter. Back in the Rose Bowl, 9-7. Bruins leading Washington, a pair of undefeated teams in the Pac-12. Michael Penix, second down and 11. Five straight completions for nine and white. Make it six. Otunze on the crosser. He's dragged down crossing the 25. It'll be about a half yard shy of the first down, and I'm betting Talapapa gets his uh, his number called here in a short yardage situation, but nice job of protecting himself. He's at the line of scrimmage identifying where the potential blitzer was coming from to make sure he had the proper protection. I'd say he had it, right? Stood in there nice and tall and delivered a nice ball to uh, to his receiver. We have not seen Talapapa since the fumbled pitch that resulted in a Bruin safety. Oh, here it's going to be Cameron Davis. Third down and one. Davis gets the carry. And he'll pick up two yards to keep the drive alive. So they overcome the holding penalty after the first and 20, and they convert to keep everything moving in their direction, yeah, the Huskies. They, they get tremendous push up front, and Davis, all he's got to do is head north and south. Don't try to shake anybody at the line of scrimmage. They, they're they happy to have him back. He's been recovering from a foot sprain. He has some burst, and the coaches really, really like him. Just a red shirt freshman. Westover will switch sides of the line. Excuse me, a sophomore. Dunze in motion. Nixon, the running back. And Penix has that ball tipped at the line. It'll be second down and 10. Through a mass of humanity, hard to see what happened on the ninth play of this possession. It hit Jacob Sykes the interior defensive lineman for UCLA, and they were able to overcome first and 20, second and 10. Oh, that's, that's easy work. Harvard transfer getting the job done on second and 10. Pass sails out of bounds, looking for Jalen McMillan. Well, that is called so much arm talent that you think you can squeeze it in anywhere. And I mean, everybody was covered. It's kind of high, it makes you think that maybe it was a throwaway. And as you mentioned, kind of, Intended for McMillan, but really being thrown over his head to get it out of bounds, come back and fight on third down. Talapapa back on the field at running back. Huskies two of three on third down so far. They need 10. Sinks and blitz here from UCLA. Six in the box, the back out of it. Pressure, Tabs and Penix is sacked for the first time this season. Latu got there, and he was coming. Excellent pass rusher is lot to five sacks on the year and at times he is almost unstoppable. He splits right between the A-gap between the center and guard on his way to Penix. And as you mentioned, the first time all season that Michael Penix Jr. has been sacked. Peyton Henry checks in for a 50-yard field goal attempt. And after setting Season high of 47 last week. Career long is 49. That came against Cal three years ago. And it bounces through. I'm out of the field. <laughs> hey, he'll take it. Peyton Henry will take it. Just hits the back or middle portion of the goalpost and manages to go through. Huskies up, 10-9. Well, back in Pasadena, here's a look at the National Championship Trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. And that's what everybody's playing for once again in 2022. And always good to see the hardware on location, Andre Ware. Nice. I have no idea who's going to play for that this year. There's so many teams and so much good football being played around the country at this stage of the season. Yeah, the consensus is Kashmir Allen retreats. Check it 
It's Keegan Jones. He's ushered out short of the 25. I was going to say the consensus. You have those top teams, Georgia, the defending champs, Alabama, Ohio State, maybe at that top tier, and then yeah. Clemson, Michigan. Oklahoma used to be there before what happened last week against Kansas State, but who knows? I think you're right. Anything's possible. Anything could happen in that Arkansas-Alabama game this weekend. Clemson-NC State tomorrow night. It's a good matchup as well. NC State playing with a lot of confidence right now. Bruins get it back, trailing by one after the 50-yard field goal, career long from Peyton Henry. And Brown in motion, and now a false start. We'll back him up five. He could do this at first and 15. Yeah, false start. Offense number 56. Five-yard penalty, first down. You know, it's an interesting year as well in the Pac-12, where you consider what's happening right down the road at SC. At, at SC and Lincoln Riley. Caleb Williams is now one of the Heisman favorites. Yeah. That offense has been electric. They were tested a week ago. These two teams are going to be in the mix for a conference title at the end of the year. Who knows what happens. I mean, there's a lot of football yet to be played. Not to mention Oregon and Utah. Yes, indeed. Two teams that have battled back after early loss. Another false More start. Movement. Yeah. Their fourth pre-snap penalty of the night. False start. Offense number 72. Five-yard penalty. First down. Here's Garrett yeah, DeGiorgio. Yeah, yeah. He, he's a little bit early and got the head coach scratching his head a little bit. Like, what's going on? But we, we saw UCLA go 93 yards in an impressive fashion to finish it with a touchdown. So hang on here. The Rams have won seven straight. Charbonnet. Stop short of the 20. Hooker two yard game. And they've been about, both teams actually, been about 70 30 in terms of pass to run. And it kind of surprises you with UCLA. I don't know if it's just, hey, we've got a high powered offense to, to match you and sending a message here early. But uh, they, they've got, both teams have a lot of confidence in their decision makers at quarterback. Play action. They'll set up the screen. Charbonnet. Waiting for the convoy, makes a man miss. Powers his way across the 35. That'll move the chains. Well, Lade sensed it. Number 68 tries to turn. He just doesn't have the speed to track down Charbonnet until somebody slows him down, and then he got himself back into the play with a big defensive lineman downfield. It's a nice heads-up play. It's too little, too late. Dre, we talked about the top two offenses in the Pac-12 tonight on display. Back-to-back -back drives, both teams have overcome first down and 20s. To keep their possessions alive. Crossing the 40 is Allen. Tackled by Bruner after a gain of four. I think for a second that Chip Kelly doesn't look at stuff like that. And hey, we got a pretty good offense ourselves. We got a pretty good guy that can uh, can sling it around. And uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson. Jones, the running back. Thompson Robinson will fake it his direction. He'll pick up the first down all the way ahead of the 49 in an eight-yard game. Well, you, you love the, the pull it down and make a play. Did not hesitate once the screener was covered up. It's like, hey, it's broken down, and that's why he's so dangerous, because he can make plays like that with his legs. His 40th career start. Dorian Thompson Robinson tonight. See the tattoos on the arm, which he designs himself. He draws those out himself. Short gain makes it second and nine. You know, Alex Cook, the safety from Washington, told me Dorian Thompson Robinson primarily is a one progression read quarterback. And you think that's easy as a D back, but it's not because he may lock in on a receiver, but at the last second, boom, he's gone with those feet. You saw it the play before. Electric with his feet, number one. I couldn't agree more, Cart. I mean, the kid is, when you think things are broken down, he just seems to make plays. Heavy pressure, flings it out into the flats. That'll be a first down and a lot more. All the way ahead in UW territory. And a late hit, he's gonna add about 15 more. Michael Iziki picks up the first down as he rumbled the near side for a gain of 17. We'll check the flag. We label him as a really tough player, back 100% after an injury early in the season, and they are glad to have him back. 
We we'll got two infractions here too, Andre. Yeah, I think it's going to be certainly the late hit, but I'm not sure if there was a penalty or a holding penalty against UCLA early. There are two fouls in the play, both by the defense, and they will ah. both be enforced. <laughs> holding defense number 99. That's a 10-yard penalty and an automatic first down. After the play, personal foul, late hit. Defense number 79. 15-yard penalty to be added. Automatic first down. So Tui Tele called for the original infraction. Clearly out of bounds, plays over, and here comes Devon Banks at the, at the tail end of it to add another or some more penalty yardage on the tail end of it. Kalen DeBoer will shore up this defense on this possession. Bruins have been electric this year. We talked about the productivity. 500 yards of total offense per game. And look where they're going to spot the football after the two penalties. All the way down to the 12. So a 17-yard pickup. 10 yards on the holding call. 12 more on the personal foul. Play action. Thompson Robinson in zone. Bobo's got it for the score. And Bobo just making himself so attractive to NFL scouts with a route running. I mean, you leave this guy one-on-one, -on -one, and that's a 6'5", 215-pound receiver, and he just flattens a slant route off. Corner doesn't have a chance. Excuse me, the safety Alex Cook does not have a chance against Bobo. Three grabs, 74 yards, and a touchdown is second of the season. Number nine for the Bruins is going to be a dynamic red zone target in the Pac-12 this year. We're seeing that already tonight and through the four, first four plus games this season. A thing of beauty. Dorian Thompson Robinson getting the job done. The completion percentage is high. The accuracy is there. The touchdown is as well as Jake Bobo gets it done once again. Well, Chip Kelly, head coach of the Bruins, year number five of his career has taken a unique path, starting as the OC at New Hampshire, winning championships, calling ball plays. That's when I first met him. Oregon, that's right. You called a game back in the day. Head coach in Eugene as the Game of Thrones begins. Head coach of the NFL, Eagles, then the 49ers. Quick cup of coffee with us at ESPN. A little studio support. And then now since 2018, head coach for the Bruins. And off to a great start this year, 4-0. And uh, 16 to 10 so far tonight. And it feels like, Dre, I mean, listen, regardless of the outcome tonight, things trending in the right direction no, there's no here. no doubt. Right? No doubt about it. And he is, he hit, batted 1,000 in terms of hitting it and hitting it just right in the, in the transfer portal. Lopez sends it deep. Giles Jackson on the run from the eight. And then Lasso down short of the 20 after a 10-yard return. Well, the Huskies will get it back in a game that has gone back and forth a couple of times already today. You got to keep an eye on number 15. Play two because he is a disruptor and a transfer from Washington to here, here to UCLA. Tremendous pass rusher and the conference's leader in that category. Yeah, five sacks coming into tonight for Latu. Six now. After he stopped that last Washington drive. They're loading up to the box to, uh, to to blitz again. I think they may back out here. Davis the running back. Penix wants to toss it. He will on a rope. And on the back shoulder. It was there. Giles Jackson who just returned the kickoff. Corrals it for a gain of 15. What a throw. This is an intentional throw behind to Jackson and it's on a rope and only Jackson's going to catch it or it's going out of bounds. But a nice adjustment by Jackson to reel it in. And they may want to look at that just to ensure that possession was clearly established. I think that's the a catch. The previous play of a completed pass is under further video review. Well, we'll check in with Matt Austin here on a play on the back shoulder. It was bang bang. Did he have complete control Matt as he was sliding out of bounds coming back to the football and Kalen DeBoer running or wondering exactly what happened there as well. Matt, what do you think? Well, definitely has a body part down inbounds. 
Uh, does he have firm control? Hard to tell from that shot. Uh, the ball definitely did touch the ground. Is he firmly controlling the ball when the ball touched the ground is the question. Uh, that's what the replay official is going to have to decide. In my opinion, that's not a catch. Looks like the hands move to the top of the ball, which means he's not fully controlling it. Uh, I, I like this as an incomplete pass. But again, has to be indisputable to overturn the call on the field. And the call on the field was a completion, 15 yards and a first down. So in theory, the question is, as Matt indicated, is there enough there, indisputable video evidence, to overturn the call? I think when it's when it's offense, replay officials should be forced to watch it in, in real time. You slow it down, and the ball shifts just a little bit yeah, as it, it hits the certain, ground. It looks a certain way. It could look, you know, one of a couple of ways, but. Damn. After further review, the receiver did not maintain possession of the ball, resulting in an incomplete pass. That's why we have Matt. Second down. That's why we have Matt. He's on fire tonight. Batting a thousand. Jackson didn't like it. It was close. Kalen DeBoer doesn't like it either. And a tough call and a big break for UCLA. Now second down and ten. Huskies 71 percent of their plays have been through the air just 29 percent of the ground so far. Culp in the flats sent out at the 25. He is some weapon just a junior. It's great size. We talked about he and Westover at that tight end spot. Give you so much flexibility offensively. He moves so well. He's a tough, tough blocker at the inline blocker at the line of scrimmage. He just kind of does the dirty work and goes about his business. Third down and two. Davis straight ahead needed two. he just gets past the marker and a late flag flies. They're, they're going to call a penalty here. Filippo 71 with a little bit extra at the end of it. Holding offense number 73 10 yard penalty repeat third down Roger Rosengarten Rosengarten that actually got the, the holding penalty. It's going to be a tough one to overcome on third down. Now you make it, instead of it being a first down, you get the holding penalty. Now third and about 12, but you'll see him right on the edge, edge of the line of scrimmage. Just kind of twist. I don't know about that one. Like a pretty good block to me. Talapapa, the running back. And third down and long. Time for Penix. Fires a pass, McMillan, and it's going to be picked up. Intercepted. Blaylock has it all the way back inside the 20 yard line. Penix has gotten away a couple of times trying to fit the ball into tight windows, and this is something he's, he's been able to avoid. Came in here with only one interception on the year. This one, he stares down a receiver, trying to allow him to get to the first down depth, and then still goes there. You see him reading the middle of the field, and he's trying to go to McMillan up the sideline on an out and up. Excellent read on the back end by Blaylock, the safety, just tracking the quarterback's eyes. Fifth year senior out of Compton, Stephen Blaylock, first interception of the season. And what did, what did Coach McGovern tell us? He said they're going to try to open up some things down the field with a post and then a secondary move exactly what they did there and Blaylock did not go inside with a post move. Bruins start in the red zone. Wide open. End zone and a touchdown. All it took was one play to Cam Brown. How about rewarding your defense for a super play? I mean, excellent play by, by Blaylock and then you take a shot. You take a shot when there's a sudden change in a game. You get a big turnover. 
And no reason not to go to the end zone where he beats Devon Banks, who gave up two touchdown passes a week ago against Stanford. Felt like coming in, that was an area that Dorian Thompson Robinson is gonna, gonna uh, try to exploit. Bruins score two touchdowns in the last one minute, 48 wow, seconds. Stephen Blaylock got the party started for UCLA. First interception of the season for the fifth year senior. Bruins were done. Dorian Thompson Robinson spots Cam Brown wide open for six. Dorian Thompson Robinson getting it done once again for the Bruins, Andre. And it's because of the, the respect that Bobo has earned in this game. So you got the nickel player inside, going to force him inside to the safety where there's double coverage on Bobo. That's the respect he's getting. It leaves Cam Brown one on one with Banks on the outside and the ankle breaking route that he runs Thompson, Thompson Robinson with an excellent throw and the timing of recognizing, hey, Bobo's not available. Let me go outside to the one-on-one -on -one coverage to, uh, to Cam Brown. Magnificent throw and catch. Jackson watches it sail over his head on the ensuing kickoff. We thought there would be offense. We thought there would be great quarterback play. The interception the last time by Penix. Take a look what they've done so far tonight. Yeah, it's only the second interception for Penix Jr., but you can, can't take anything away from Thompson Robinson here with 13 and 19, 180 yards. He's completed six in a row, and, the, and two of the six have gone for touchdown passes. So he is playing some outstanding football. I mean, it feels like he's been here for 17 years because... <laughs> he's a vet, that's for sure. Yeah, it's his fifth year in the program. Talapapo straight ahead. A nice gain on first down. Second and short coming up. Stefan Blaylock with that last pick on Michael Penix. And he told me this week that Penix likes to throw into tight windows. There would be an opportunity for an interception like that. And he's a fascinating young man, Blaylock. He does spoken word poetry, which takes a lot of guts. And the coaches love how he's playing right now. He's the play caller on the back end for UCLA. Alapapa, jump cut, makes a man miss. Penalty marker back at the 31. That's enough for the first down. We'll check if the issue was deep in the backfield. It's going to be another hold. Holding. Offense number 55. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat second down. That was on Leatu Latu, Andre. And really, I mean, he's been such an incredible force in this game and this season. We talked about it. When he's on the field, you've got to account for him. And he's just such a phenomenal player. Absolutely a hold. In that situation, going to erase a big time run by Talapapa. Instead of first and 10, second down and 12 from the 23. Talapapa, patient finish. And a short pickup makes it third down and long after a four-yard game. I'll tell you what, UCLA, Bill McGovern, they're known for two high safety looks, but they have been aggressive in how they play defense tonight. Not afraid in at, at a lot of instances to go man-to-man -man against a talented receiving core, and they're getting tremendous, and I mean tremendous, pass rush without having to blitz. Well, McGovern first season coming in to call plays on the defensive side of the ball. Third down and eight, Penix, backside pressure. Incomplete, West over the intended target. And he simply dropped it. The pressure was coming from Grayson Murphy. Yeah, the route forcing Penix to check it down to Westover. It's going to be shy of the first down marker had he caught it anyway. But the tight coverage on the back end. There's no one open and nowhere to go with a football in terms of first down yardage for Michael Penix Jr. First punt of the game for either side. Jack McAllister standing at his own 13. Sends it to Logan Loya. And the 24. And one Husky miss and two. Quick dive across the 30. Time out on the field. Approaching six to play in an entertaining first half in the Pac-12. Bruins out in front by 13.
Don't forget, coming up this week on Sunday NFL Countdown, one-on-one with Jalen Hurts and Jerry Jones. And before Josh Allen faces Lamar Jackson, an inside look at how the dual-threat quarterback has changed the game. Kick off your Sunday with NFL Countdown, 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. And the Monday Night Countdown crew gets you set for Rams 49ers at 6 Eastern. Both are on ESPN. And the app. Quick walk down the Walk of Fame. Back now in Pasadena inside the Rose Bowl. Bruins with a 23 10 lead against number 15 Washington. Charbonnet, after a three yard gain, is stopped dead in his tracks. I want to know how, how, uh, how well Doran Thompson Robinson's playing. Last eight completions have gone to eight different Bruin receivers. There's not, he's not just targeting Bobo. You need a go to receiver, but when they start to try to double him as they did on his last touchdown pass, You've got to have somewhere else to go, and he's got seven other guys that are catching passes. He's also 10 of his last 11, so he is playing some outstanding football. And we told you about the completion percentage. The productivity down the field has been there as well. Charbonnet carving up the Huskies' defense. And he's throwing blocks out in front of Charbonnet. When have you seen a quarterback toss it and then go become a lead blocker? It's back in the wing tee when I was in high school. I mean. The action of just getting out in front of Charbonnet and the you got to want to do something like that. It's easy to pitch it and just go watch the action or sit back and watch it. But that's going to earn him some big time compliments in the film room tomorrow. Right. The locker room loves that. Everybody loves that on this team. Zeke rumbles into plus territory. And a quick pitch and catch results in eight for big number 86. Certainly don't see that on the collegiate level. The linemen are going to get excited. Charbonnet is going to, going to give some high fives to, to DTR. He is feeling it right now, and he is locked in. Second and two. We'll pull it out to the edge. We'll have the first down. You know, we talked with Chip Kelly this week about Dorian Thompson Robinson. One of the questions we asked him, give us something that you haven't given anybody on DTR because it feels like everything that could be said, every story that could be told, has been told and he said I'll give you this he's the toughest player on this team yeah the way that he stands in the pocket the way that he faces the blitz and the pressure and just handles himself and I think we saw that on that attempted block and he can add to that getting out in front of your tailback and throwing blocks right as well that goes on the list now pick up four yards quick scamper into the flats wide open this is going to be another first down for the Bruins how about the move Charmin all the way down to the 10. Well, we didn't lie to you. When the guy gets in the open field, he can make defenders miss. And it's Hampton out in front that he makes miss and picks up some additional yards. He is tough between the tackles, but when he gets in the open field, he can flat out make you look foolish. It's a gain of 32. The Bruins knocking on the door once again. Charbonnet gets a breather. Keegan Jones in the backfield. And where is the 6-5 Bobo? Do you dare play man-to-man -man against him? Thompson Robinson with time. Heaves it in zone. Oh, and incomplete. Now the thought was there to Jake Bobo. Just a little bit too much over the outstretched hands of, of nine. I don't know that down here as quick quickly as things happen as quick as things happen down here that you can stay with Bobo it's almost you know it's unfair you have got to play zone which that opens up the running game if you indeed try to do that with two high safeties Charbonnet and Jones two backs on the field second down and goal to go inside give and a three maybe four to Jones I go back with the same look because they're gone to that bracket coverage again where the nickel is outside shoulder on Bobo trying to force him inside the safety help. And you're going to have one of these other receivers wide open. Cam Brown's going to get the one on one coverage here. Outside shoulder on Bobo trying to force him into Alex Cook. Late pitch. And on third down and goal, Jones will be stymied short of the five, a two yard gain. Chip's going to take the field goal here. That's a good stop for the Huskies Whoa. defense to try to keep it at two scores late in the first half. 
So every drive for the Bruins tonight has ended up in the red zone. And now UCLA looking for its fourth consecutive score. Nicholas Barmira. Seven for nine this season. And the chip shot is bang through. And it almost forces Washington into a must score situation here before the half because UCLA is going to get it first out of the locker room to start the second half. So you're almost in a situation here where you, you've got to go down and score. Don't forget, coming up on the Sling TV halftime report, storylines of the Pac-12 through the month of September. Quarterbacks to watch coming up tomorrow. We told you about Clemson, NC State, DJ Uyongalale, and Devin Leary for the Pac virtual locks as well. So guys try to make you a little bit of cash. 16-point game with 2.29 to go in our first half here in Pasadena. Always fun to watch, virtual locks. You got a pick for me tomorrow night, NC State, at Clemson, Tigers won 36 straight. If I don't pick Clemson, I can't get in the car and get a ride back. Well, that's another hotel. story for I'm another picking, day. I'm picking Clemson <laughs> at home. Clemson, man, Tigers all the wow. way. How about that? <laughs> I'm no fool. You lit me up last week on that, <laughs> on the text thread that you and you I and Clark have. Still a two-score game. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see if the Huskies can mount a comeback. A lot of football left to be played. Both of these teams undefeated. We've told you about that many times. And Washington trying to put together a drive here with just one time out. They had to burn two earlier in the, in the half. Don't forget our week four Monday night football matchup, an NFC West rivalry game between the Rams and 49ers, and a rematch of last year's NFC Championship, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Peyton and Eli also return on ESPN2. Coverage starts with Monday Night Countdown at 6 Eastern. Game last year and everybody talking. Matt Stafford on his way to a world championship as the Rams found a way against the 49ers. Penix gets it back. Rifles a shot that's intercepted. His second pick of the night. Bruins get it back. John John Bonds. I just read the eyes of Penix and Leaks back inside. He thought he had the corner held on a six-yard smash route on the on the outside. So you have a corner route with a route underneath. He leaks back inside and right into the football. And UCLA got a chance to really flip this game or turn it upside down. First pick of the season for John John Vons, junior from right here in Pasadena. And UCLA gets it back. The Huskies 39. Well, this is where I'm dialing up one. Sudden change on my opponent's side of in plus yardage territory. I'm going deep right here. Well, Penix throwing interceptions. Dorian Thompson Robinson throwing touchdowns so far. Play action. There's the screen, and it's broken up. It's a heck of a play. Now swatted away and at the last minute. Latuli Nuss and Ona makes it second and ten. That is a heck of a play because that's getting ready to go for a while if he doesn't get a hand on that one. 91 was there. And second down again. And this one's going to be. Was it picked off off the carom? The ball came out late and they will say incomplete. Got to hold on to it, big fella. Tooley tried to swat it to his teammate. Early on the field with an incomplete pass. Taylor. Third down. Tui Taylor had it. He was trying to run with it. And he took a shot. He takes a shot right in, right between his number, the two nines on his jersey. Just hit right on the football, and guess who? The toughest guy on the team. Number one, Dorian Thompson Robinson. How about that Breaks play? it up. So we've seen him do a couple of things. Going out, throwing a block, and then hits a guy right, right on the football. It's a 100-pound difference between those players. All he does on the next play, a first down strike to Jake Bobo. My goodness. What a performance tonight for number one for the Bruins. Making a case for himself tonight. Bobo now four catches, 88 yards and a touchdown. Bruins utilizing tempo. Thompson Robinson keeps it and is going to be sacked behind the 30. Well, he took a shot from Jeremiah Martin. And you got guys coming to his defense right away, and rightfully so. 
Well, just get rid of this one. Don't take a shot. Nobody's open. Just throw the ball away. And Martin with a little extra. I'm shocked that a flag wasn't thrown there for unsportsmanlike conduct. Loss of seven, first sack of the night for the Huskies defense. They had eight. You referenced that earlier last week against Stanford at home. It's a little bit, a little more athletic ability under center for UCLA than last week. Backside pressure coming. Thompson Robinson sensing it. Trying to get to the edge. That's a layup. Short of the line to gain. Well, he's feeling it tonight, Roy. My goodness, is he feeling it tonight. I wonder Chip holds him in such high regard and says that he's the toughest player on the team. With plays like we've witnessed in the last two possessions and then this one, no, you're going to take a shot when you come down. Timeout. You see a way they're close to That's the just half. flat out this sweep the right there. Right over for Big Ulanen. Timeout is called third and seven coming up. Dorian Thompson Robinson, that was a gain of 10 to make this third and manageable. How impressive has he been? He's already thrown for 235 and two scores. But the toughness that we've talked about, it's there. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I, I think he's taking it personal without you know, everybody, myself included, we're, uh, us included, talking about Phoenix Jr. coming in. He's like, hey, remember me at the before this one's over. And he has a look on his face that is so focused and locked in. I hadn't seen him smile. Yeah, that's after a touchdown pass, after a big run, after a block, a, a fumble or <laughs> caused uh, incompletion or interception. With that big hit, he is locked in. Bruins have been dominant so far in the second quarter. Time winding down as Charbonnet motions out on third and seven. Back foot throw, the tight end. Habermel corrals it, and let's see where they spot it. Hampton brought him down quickly. He's a yard short. He, did, he wanted to go for it the last time they were down here. And Chip decided to go ahead and take the field goal. Make it a two-score game, but actually see what he does here. The Bruins call their second timeout. One remaining. Doesn't feel like he called the timeout to bring out the field goal unit, although I've been no, wrong at times this I year. He's dialing up his best fourth down play or fourth and one play right now. And that might include number one out on the edges. Well, we've seen that option play yeah. where he's made some good decisions. It's tough when you have Chabernet and, and uh, Chabernet and then Dorian Thompson Robinson. If you decide to go go option, get everybody to one side of the formation, you go short side of the field and you pick it up that way. 40th career start. It's the most yards he's thrown for in a first half in his entire career tonight. If he's thinking about going left with it, you got to get out of it because there's two guys outside the tackle box. Charbonnet straight ahead, twisting and turning, and I don't know. I don't think he got it. He's going to be just shy. Bruins will get the football to start the second half. Thule met him right at the line of scrimmage with 23 seconds left. And the initial spot Official to me looks like measurement. he's short. Bruins potentially could be 0 for 2 on fourth down in this first half and still lead by 16. He's just going to be shy. Patala as well in there playing with that club. Number 11 coming in to try to finish things off. Kill the momentum of Charbonnet. I think he's short. And never crossed the line to gain from that early look and given where the football is, it needed to touch the 15. It currently is not. We're trying to throw the knockout shot right there. You score, you get pick up that one. You're pretty much guaranteed some points. And it's well shot. So two stops by the Huskies on fourth down. Keep them in it going way. in to the break at intermission here. Look on Dorian Thompson's Robinson's face has not changed. I mean, it is laser focused. Love it. Now the Bruins currently own the third longest winning streak in the country going back to last year. Seven straight and halfway home to number eight here in Pasadena. 
So aggressive the Huskies want to be. They'll empty the backfield for Michael Penix Jr. And a short toss crossing the 20. Have to take that time out now with that one. Well, Papa has it. Timeout. Well, if you're Kalen DeBoer with what you've seen in this first half and you try to go back to the drawing board a little bit with Penix, who you know, has struggled for the first time this season tonight. What What's the message in well, that? There's a guy that has, you know, his, his button on what's going on with Penix. It's it's obviously goes to Boer. So he, he'll just tell him, hey, take your time, go through your reads. Don't try to force the football. You're a talented guy. We know you can throw it through, you know, any, uh, you know, the smallest of tires. But go ahead and go through the progression, spread the football around, and just be you. Do what, we, what got you here, and that's, that's uh, that's that's being precise with the football. So I, I think they'll re revisit some things at the half. Get Penix playing better, but we got to get something going defensively and slow down UCLA because they are having their way right now, or had their way in the first half of this. Huskies also with six penalties in this first half, totaling 68 yards. Empty backfield again for Penix and across the middle, incomplete. Odunze felt like he was grabbed. McMillan was the intended target across the middle. Well, third down. Well, this all of a sudden becomes interesting if a quick play and a clock stoppage occurs. Guarantee a chip will. They stop him here, he'll take that last time out and force a punt. Penix won for his last five, including two interceptions. On third down, deep ball's caught. He'll move the chains ahead to the 34, Jalen McMillan. Maybe a clock it here. And nine seconds remaining on second and 10 coming up. Run off sometime, it takes about three seconds for that process. Is that a mathematical clock fact? Please. It's impossible to execute the yes. clocking Thank you. sequence. Just a second or two. We took it down to seven. I love it when you're right like that. <laughs> you're always right about holding offensive line play, receivers running the wrong routes. Penix wants to go deep. He'll float one to no man's lane. The final play. An exciting first half. Dorian Thompson Robinson has been the difference so far. 26 to 10, our score, the Bruins leading Washington. Coming up after the break, it's the Sling TV halftime report. Kevin Connors, Joey Galloway, and Sam Acho in the studio. Stay tuned. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Ram Trucks. Beautiful Los Angeles. You're watching the Pac-12 on ESPN. Two quarters in the books here inside the Rose Bowl. 26 to 10, our score start of our second half. UCLA leading 15th ranked Washington. Andre Ware, Roy Philpott, Park Arcaterra down on the sidelines. And the big story in the first half, Dorian Thompson Robinson. I mean, Literally, he did everything for the Bruins. He just took over. I mean, he took over the first half of this football game. And yes, indeed, he did everything from throwing touchdown passes to Cam Brown, going through his progressions and finding Cam Brown in single coverage. And then, hey, I can go out and lead block for my tailback as well, making plays there. Breaking up a potential interception on a guy that weighs about 100 pounds more than he does. And then the capper. I'm going to go airborne for my team, just laying it out, laying it out all, all on the line. What a what a first half by the Bruins. And on top of that, his most productive first half through the air in his career, making his 40th career start tonight here in Pasadena. Washington is in the game because of its defense and two critical fourth down stops in that first half. And quite frankly, the Huskies need more of everything from Michael Penix Jr. in the second half. But the Bruins set to receive our third quarter kickoff. Well, that's why it's so important for Washington to get that stop at the end of the first half. Five yards deep, they'll bring it out 
to the 25. Down to Paul. Just spoke to Chip Kelly moments ago, and he's thrilled with Dorian Thompson Robinson's play. He said he's making the right decisions, and he's finding Jake Bobo, who he said is a pretty good player. <laughs> yes, indeed. Jake Bobo has been lighting up. But the 241 yards for Thompson Robinson through the air, he's taken advantage of a Washington secondary that's a little depleted. Three regulars have been nicked up in the last couple weeks, and you see the difference in terms of, of the depth this week as opposed to maybe against Michigan State and Stanford in the back end in Thompson Robinson season. Yeah, those missing players tonight have been critical. Big running play for Charbonnet. No ace and Turner tonight. Mish Powell also out and Cameron Williams in the Washington secondary not available tonight as we take another look at Zach Charbonnet getting it done. Right, they just wash everything down inside and such an electric runner. Chip told us that he is a three down back. He, he can do just about all of it as well. Catching passes out of the backfield. He's the complete three down back that you look for. Yeah, after starting his career in Ann Arbor, wanted to be closer to home and to his sister. And he really has been a valuable component for the Bruins this year. Tiptoe reception made to the 45 by Cam Brown. Yeah, what I like most about Charbonnet is that he doesn't ask out of a game after a big run. I mean, you got to get yourself in shape. Because, you, you know, I see guys do that all the time. Sometimes you come out, another guy goes in, makes a big run, and stays in the game. You don't get back on the field. So, you know, get yourself in shape where you can carry the football, you know, pretty much every time you're called to do it. Charbonnet motions out after the six-yard gain. He'll get the swing pass. Hmm. And one defender miss, and that's enough for a first down. A nifty move in the backfield. No, Hampton thought he could corral him. He could not, Andre. We talked about the running. Here's the second part of it, and that's being able to catch it. And then in the open field, make guys look foolish at six foot one, 220 pounds with moves like that. Feed the ground game again, plunging across the 45 and down near the 40-yard line, an eight-yard game. That's three plays of just about 10 yards uh, a pop on the average. And finally, you know, it's because the coaching staff is, is sending someone in to give him a blow, not because he's tapping his helmet asking out of the game. Already over 100 yards of total offense, had a 32-yard reception in that second quarter. Second and short, Wayne Thompson Robinson will buy some time, flings it, caught. That's enough for the first down along the far side to Brown again. So Cam Brown transfers in out of Texas A&M and has done a great job for this offense this season. Yeah, he really has. Has the touch, had the touchdown pass in the first half. But, you know, he's, Jordan Thompson Robinson may be one of the best at throwing off platform. Where he's got to move around, but yet the feet are pointed in an opposite direction of where the arm needs to go. But he's extremely accurate, especially this season. Five receptions for Cam Brown. He had three on the season coming into tonight. Thompson Robinson, I thought he was going to go airborne again, didn't need to. He slides in safely for another first down. 13 yard gain for the quarterback. This little, little box out by Habermill, uh, the tight end as well to, to free up DTR. Yeah, Habermill coming out of high school, we told you the first half weighed 170 pounds was not recruited really by anybody. He arrives at UCLA as a walk-on. Paul spent some time with him this week, but just a great personality. And he's blossomed now at 250 pounds and a big time target and weapon. Charbonnet through a big hole. Yeah, take him out for about a play or two and then put him right back in. And the only thing that happens, the big time runs coming from number 24. Boy, is he electric or what? All seven drives by the Bruins have reached the red zone. Charbonnet with a first down and a lot more. First down and goal for UCLA. A lot of teams talk about, well, we got to have the big three. Well, Dorian Thompson Robinson, he qualifies. Zach Charbonnet, he qualifies. Jake Bowman. Thompson Robinson, end zone and touchdown. And a quick snap of the football to go along with it. They've got a big three, led by number one. He has done it all tonight. We saw it on display there once again. Quick 
snap. Everybody pinching down inside, including Braylon Trice. And it's just a step or two too slow for Dorian Thompson Robinson. You talked about the look in his eye. It's we still saw it early, and yet it remains there clearly. He's in the zone, playing quarterback at UCLA. Orchestrating all the magic tonight for the Bruins, Andre. It's become automatic when UCLA has the football. But, and it's coming through their leader, Dorian Thompson Robinson. And now we take a look at tonight's game flow brought to you by Progressive. Dorian Thompson Robinson doing it all on the ground on that last drive. He had some help with Charbonnet, but on the ground, got a nice little box out from his tight end. And then all of a sudden he gets down close. Charbonnet with a nice run to get him inside the five yard line. Watch the foot mark of number one, Dorian Thompson Robinson, just sweet. I mean, two defenders collided with each other on that play as he just scooted to the side. I mean, we probably should make more of that maneuver that we saw from DTR there, quite impressive. Just adding to his highlight tape. And you look at the comparison in the backfield and who's doing what. And Dorian Thompson Robinson, Zach Charbonnet, you've really sung his praises all night as well, rightfully so. Over five yards of carry and a touchdown run in his own right. He is the complete package, and I think they have it at quarterback as well with DTR. Last 4 0 start for the Bruins coming back in 2015, trying to improve to 5 0 tonight. We have to make Michael Penix feel comfortable. That's what Kalen Abor told me moments ago. He said that his quarterback is obviously feeling pressure that he hasn't felt throughout the season. He hadn't been sacked heading into tonight. Sacked twice. He feels the wide receivers are winning their routes against these DBs from UCLA. It's just finding those spots for Penix to get into a groove and not be harassed by this UCLA defense. And on the other side of it, Clark, Bill McGovern told us yesterday that in, in terms of his keys to victory, We've got to make the quarterback uncomfortable, which is exactly what UCLA has done or did in the first half. Third down and three. First touch for Penix in this third quarter. Bill McGovern looking on it. What a great acquisition he has been coming in from the Chicago Bears as a linebacker's coach a season ago. Dunze in motion. Talapapa the running back on third down. Time for Penix, side arms, and Cole has it to move the chains close to the 40. All oh, that talent on the outside, and it's covered up, but you can't cover everybody, and the tight ends starting to find their way into this game. Off platform, little sidearm throw by Penix to move the chains. Mark it at the 39. Penix has only thrown for 140 yards tonight. Only touchdown of the night for the Huskies. Coming on that first possession way back in the first quarter. Four-yard pickup here. They start getting some Charbonnet-type runs with this Husky offense. And whether it's Talapapa or Davis, he's got to start getting to the second level. And uh, he's controlling the line of scrimmage. Talapapa weaving his way, twisting and turning. Head to the 47, that'll bring up third down and two. Churchwell with the tackle that time. And what it'll do, Roy, is slow down this pass rush and force guys to play run defense, will, which will give Michael Penix Jr. a little more time in the pocket to, to survey the field. Third and a long two, Cameron Davis, the running back for the Huskies. Trailing by 23. He'll pitch it. Davis. Corral in the backfield. He's going to lose half a yard. Latou got there for the TFL. Already had a sack in the first half. That's such a player. Transferred in from the University of Washington. And he's there. They, you've got a defender sitting there staring, and it's him waiting on Davis to make a play. And they're going to, looks like they're going to go for it here. Maybe a hard count to try to draw an aggressive UCLA front four off sides. Couldn't imagine going for it and not picking it up here, giving UCLA a hot offense. 
a short field. Middle of the field, wide open. Penix with time, has the first down into UCLA territory. So the catch by Jackson to keep the drive alive. Giles Jackson on a crossing route. Awfully tough for defensive backs like Devin Kirkwood to stay with him in man coverage all the way across the field. And then you have an accurate quarterback that can deliver it out in front. So fourth and short, he'll pick up eight yards. Every drive critical now for the Huskies as Jackson steps off for a moment. They've got to score right, basically every possession they get and then hope to stop UCLA. Davis motions back in and now out. Waiting in the flats, he'll get the call. Penalty marker flies. We're going to have a late hit on the quarterback. And it's the two. Holding. Oh. Offense number 73. Ten yard penalty. Repeat first down. Wow. There's a guard in the end for the penalty. Second of the night. Huskies now with four holding penalties called against the offensive line this evening, Andre. Well, they hadn't faced, well, I guess in practice a year ago they faced Latou, but uh, they hadn't faced a pass rush of his caliber this year. Already approaching 80 penalty yards. For the Huskies on the road for the first time. First and 20. Penix off the back foot, rifles a shot that's caught. And spun down to the 40 is Odunze. We'll get that penalty yardage back and a lot more. It'll bring up second and three after a gain of 17. What a throw. It's just so effortless. Just, just every time the ball comes out, whether he's got a throw with touch or he's got a laser one across the field, it's a tight spiral and accurate. Odunze now with 81 yards through the air and five catches. UCLA 40. Penix. So that went out of bounds looking for Polk. So Jalen Polk was open for a moment. He's kind of off balance there. Is he hearing footsteps from behind? It felt like that maybe for a moment. Well, it looked as though it was he got to the read a little bit late to Polk, and he's throwing a little bit off balance, which caused the pass to sail a little bit. Third down. Davis straight ahead with an alley. And that'll move the six. That's a great tackle by Blaylock. If Blaylock doesn't make that tackle on Davis, it's a sprint to the end zone. Closing from inside out, making sure you wrap up and you got a blocker in front of him if Davis breaks through that. Stefan had that first half interception. Huskies chipping away on this possession. Now play number 11. They've only marched 42 yards thus far. collapsing and Penix in out of bounds can't follow through because of exactly what you described the pocket right in his face can't step into the throw he's got to kind of you know half arm it and it's causing it to sail a little bit on him. it's Grayson Murphy called his name several times this evening clock stops and the incompletion with 620 to go in the third it's a good problem to have. We got two twins that can get after the passer as well as Latou. Penix nicks it. Nicks it on the first down. And Karam's inside the 20. The Washington in the red zone for the first time in the second half. Well, nice job. They're going to roll away from Latou, who has been. Just a thorn in their side all night long, giving Rosengarten all he can handle tonight and finding Nixon who picks up the first down. Nice timing on the play to get it in the hands of his running back. 14 yard pickup. Nixon races back into the backfield and now out. Penix steps up and delivers a strike. McMillan off and running with the spin and the touchdown. And the Huskies are right back in it. Nice job. Just everything's about timing in this offense. 
predominantly a pass offense, been about 70-30 tonight. Pass to run, but McMillan with the spin and the timing of the pass to give it to him while he's open and he can get away from zone defenders, not allow him to, to close in on him and corral him up. 33 to 16, and now Washington will go for two. Decide where they want to put the football. Penix looking towards the end zone, has time, and incomplete. Odunze was the target, nine yards deep. That pass had a little bit too much zest on it. With a touchdown counts, Andre for McMillan. Yeah, nice job of going through his progressions, finding McMillan and getting themselves right back in this game. Well, an incredible start tonight for UCLA's offense, led by Dorian Thompson Robinson. Bruins have yet to punt tonight, and the progressions have been there for DTR. And you can see him going through one, two, third receiver, and then throwing accurately again. Third receiver in the progression. That comes with experience and knowing what you're doing or what you do when the off it within the offense. 20 completions to eight different receivers. Bobo's been there. Charbonnet out of the backfield. Cam Brown. And then he's run one in as well. The leap we saw in the first half and the incredible move near the goal line here in the third quarter. I think they're going to be showing those replays for quite some period of time. Jones muffed the kickoff and now takes off. Driven down to the 35, down to Paul Carcaterra. Yeah, we have another renaissance man in Bruin tight end Hudson Habermill. He plays the guitar. The Juggle. He was on the speech and debate teams in high school and played four sports, volleyball, basketball, and what he told me, his true love, lacrosse, and football, of course. But not till his senior year, a UCLA staff member saw his highlight reel on Twitter and offered him a preferred walk-on spot as a wide receiver. Now he's a tight end, getting it done in the classroom as well, making honor roll regularly. This guy is the full package. A true renaissance man. What again is a renaissance man? <laughs> Charbonnet the handoff. <laughs> He's keeping those legs churning, crossing the 40. I'm going to go out on a limb, and I think Clark's going to find a renaissance man. It's like a new segment. Every Friday night. It should be. Yeah, no doubt about it. We should it. celebrate all these multi-talented student athletes. Yeah, he's really cool, too. On the sideline, in between <laughs> series, he wears glasses, sunglasses. He, like, just a cool <laughs> California kid. Wants to be an environmental lawyer after a run, potentially, for the NFL. So, great, great young man. Charbonnet a run close to first down yardage. We saw him briefly yesterday, and he yeah. was enthusiastic. He, did. He, he couldn't believe you didn't know what a renaissance man was. Yeah, he made fun of me, too. <laughs> so now everybody wondering why we keep bringing that up, they all know now. It's amazing. Clark is a renaissance man himself. He's a barber. He's, oh, yeah. he's a baker. A jack of all trades. They're down in short. Charbonnet's got the first down and a lot more. Charbonnet in the plus territory. Wow. Tripped up, crossing the 35 by Alex Cook. What a weapon. What a weapon to have in the backfield. They got he and Dorian Thompson Robinson doing their thing together. This is beautiful. This takes a lot of pressure off and off, off an offense. When you can have that type of running game and a guy that can break it just about every time you give it to him. The gain of 22 by number 24 puts him over 100 yards tonight on just 18 rushes. Flag down here. Ball start. Offense number 86. Five yard penalty. First down. ZK, the tight end. If he went across the line and came back or flinched a little bit. There's four minutes remaining in our third quarter. First and 15. Play action. Thompson Robinson heaves it. Pass is caught. That's a first down. Touchdown! How does Julia 
Marcus Irvin, who is, they actually they describe him as their best cover man, end up on Bobo in space like that. It's just unfair. Such a good route runner, Bobo. He can turn defensive backs around, and that's how you get that wide open. And then he's a finisher as well because he's so big and physical after the catch. But it's the route. Selling a guy inside, going back outside, turns completely around and can't stay with Bobo. Five catches, 127 yards, and two touchdowns. He entered the transfer portal. Chip Kelly talked to former Duke head coach David Cutcliffe. It didn't take long, and now in Westwood, Bobo getting it done with two scores tonight. And welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Ram Trucks. And a look at the Walt Disney Concert Hall. Beautiful structure. So we welcome you back to Pasadena. Big night for Jake Bobo. Career high, 127 yards through the air. Career high, two touchdown receptions. And what a weapon. Now playing for the Bruins after a sensational career in the Atlantic Coast Conference with the Duke Blue Devils. 40 to 16. Giles Jackson marching across the 20 and driven down there. Big game tomorrow night, Clemson and NC State, a top 10 showdown. Mention the ACC, of course, that went in the ACC's Atlantic Division. Devin Leary, DJ Uwe Angulale. He's been a renaissance man this year and a rebirth of his career. In a different Clemson offense, but a different Clemson defense. We'll see what Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreit have to say tomorrow night on the call of that one. Well, they needed every yard and every touchdown pass last week against Wake Forest, who just threw it all over the park. What a game that was. Deeks will get Florida State tomorrow in a top 25 battle as well. Speaking of Florida State, i got a question for you. Oh, I like questions. Friday night comparison. Who are you most impressed with, Jake Bobo or Johnny Wilson, who we saw earlier this, this year? Well, similar body types. Yep, about each guy over 6'5". Similar production so far. Bobo still has more than a quarter to go, so we'll see what that looks like. Penix fires a pass, it's caught. And after a short gain ahead of the 30, it'll be third down and short. Newton still, with the catch. Still waiting on your answer. A slight lean towards Bobo right now. That night, though. Heavy Bobo's, lean. Bobo's heavy Bobo's lean towards Bobo. Okay. He runs better routes. I don't know, guys. That night, Johnny Wilson just took over and showed America what he was made of. Bobo's got help tonight. Bobo did more at his first stop at Duke than Wilson did at Arizona State. Yeah, that's true. But I mean that we laid eyes on. Newton out of the backfield. Panic steps up. Heavy pressure. He'll extend the play and throw it in the turf. Penalty marker flies, and that's going to be a first down for the Huskies. Grayson Murphy collapsed the pocket. Odunze, the intended receiver. Pass interference or holding on the back end is going to give Washington this first down. I love your question. Pass interference, defense number four. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. I'll tell you what. Correction, I, correction, it's number six. I could take both of them, put them out at X and Z in the run and shoot, and just <laughs> give me a couple of slots in, in Dixon and, and uh, Phillips, and we could do some damage. Infraction was called against John Humphrey. I mean, you put 90 points on at least one team that I remember back in the day. I didn't play the second half. Okay. Like that. Can't take all that credit you're trying to give me. It was still impressive. <laughs> the Cougs. He's had a tough one tonight, or yeah. earlier today. We'll see them next week on the road at Memphis. Out in the flats, Talapapa. Gain of three, and that's going to be about it. He was quickly stopped. Devin Kirkwood met him first. Now you're at that stage, 40 spot. You got to score every single time, every possession. Games getting late. We, get, we make our way towards the fourth quarter. Got to put points on the board. Second and seven. 
40 to 16 under two to go in the third. Penix will step up and now will take off. Michael Penix slides in short of midfield. And I think that's something that scouts will be looking at. Can he still do that? Has that aspect of his game? And the answer is yes. A couple of knee surgeries, but uh, he can still pull it down at times when he needs to and make plays. But he also shows you he can go through the progressions and be accurate with the football. Third down and four. Better crowd tonight here at the Rose Bowl compared to UCLA's first three home games. This is four down territory for Washington right here. Movement. Rosengard. False start. Offense number 83. Five yard penalty. Third down. And he's got number 15 over his his nose so it's, it explains why he's trying to get a head start on Latou. Latou Latou leading the Pac-12 in sacks and he just makes things happen yeah. even when Washington's not throwing the football tonight. Kind of reminds me of one of one or both of the Bosa brothers out of Ohio State. He's got that look. He's got that kind of motor. Third down and nine. Penix throws a strike into Odunze and that's a first down at the UCLA 40. What a throw. Hey, there's three defenders in the area and the accuracy. First it takes courage to do it and belief in your arm but look at that three guys around Odunze. Odunze now over 100 yards receiving. Penix looking towards number one's direction again. Marker on the field of the 41, Humphrey in coverage. Yeah, he realized he had a free play because there was a UCLA defender on sides. Defense number 12 in the neutral zone at the snap. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. It's Grayson Murphy. First down and five. What could be the final play of the third quarter coming up? Murphy gets as close to the line of scrimmage as you could possibly get. He actually looked like he was backing up. Maybe it was his twin brother. Now you got Grayson, you got Gabriel. Penix, long toss for a first down. Final play of the third quarter. Talapapa will move the chains, but Washington with a lot of work to do and only 15 minutes left to do it on the road for the first time in 2022. Bruins have been impressive and lead it 40 to 16. Back in Pasadena, you know, when you've scored 40 points in three quarters and you haven't punted yet tonight, and you know what, your star tight end, Hudson Haberbill, you can wear your sunglasses at night, Andre Ware. <laughs> and jam in the process. Oh, my goodness. The true renaissance man all smiles rightfully. So it's got two passes. His quarterback, Dorian Thompson Robinson, has done the bulk of the damage. And the Bruins will try to get another stop defensively here with Washington on the move. 15 minutes ago, 40 to 16, our score. Andre Ware, Roy Philpott, Paul Carcaterra. And the Huskies on the road. Ranked in the top 15. Richard Newton scampers ahead. Habermill had those glasses on at walkthrough yesterday. Granted, it was 80 degrees and sunny, and we're at nighttime, but like Corey Hart said, I wear my sunglasses at night. <laughs> <laughs> and especially when the lights are bright, right? Unreal. And they've yet to punt tonight, so you can get away with that easily. Yeah, over about 441 yards of total offense. And DTR with 297 through the air. Charbonnet and Bobo, they both contributed in major ways. Second and seven. Penix, a quick delivery. Jalen McMillan. Close to first down yardage, the tackle by Hearn. It'll be third and short. Well, we're talking about the big three. Big three has done some damage tonight. DTR, 297 through the air. Charbonnet over 100 yards, 107 on the ground. And then Bobo contributing 127 in receiving yards. That qualifies as a big three. 
Third down and two. Newton gets the handoff. And a power finish. Moves the chains. Stopped at the 13 after a three-yard pickup. They've gone four deep now with Newton in the game. Davis, Nixon, and Talapapa all contributing in that running game for, for Washington. Trying to find the spark or someone that can hit the home run for them. Dylan DeBoer trying to implore his team maybe a, a little bit more of a sense of urgency here. Almost two minutes have gone by in our fourth quarter. Stay on the ground, a spin. Stopped at the 10 is Newton. A player down for UCLA. Almost popped the ball out of the hands of Newton, which caused him to have to put both hands on it, and they spun around in order to do so. It's Murphy, who's slow to get up. Grayson Murphy quickly to his feet, holding that wrist. And he's the guy, he stuck his hand in there and almost got the ball out, but injured his hand in the process. Twin brother coming over to check on him. You mentioned earlier, originally out of Dallas, Texas, started their careers at North Texas with the Mean Green. A couple of seasons there now. Here in the Pac-12. A sick feeling when those two left in the transfer portal. Two outstanding players. Newt remains in as pass protector. What a catch. Dunze, over 100 yards receiving, stopped at the five. Dunze just reaches back and plucks this thing right out of the air, and it's a bullet. That is one heck of a play. Concentration, hands, all come into play there. Get a methodical approach on this possession for the Huskies. I mean, time's running, and you'd think they'd be a little bit quicker in and out of the huddle. But you got to make sure you score. Power formation on third down and one. Play action. Back of the end zone, wide open. That's a touchdown. Devin Cole grabs it on the run in 83. Can Penix throw it or what? It just makes it look so easy. First touchdown of the season for Colt, the junior out of Spokane. He goes front side to a, a corner route, which looks like a smash concept with a guy going to the corner and somebody in the flat. Comes off that, looks left, and then back to his tight end, Colt. That's about going through the third to the third receiver in the progression. And that's the third touchdown pass tossed by Penix. They'll go for two to try to make it Two-score game. And the direct snap. Perhaps a Philly special. They'll keep it on the ground. The two-point conversion is good. So Polk races in for two. And our new score, 40 to 24. Well, third man in the progression is Culp in the back of the end zone. He comes up with it. Washington goes for two. And they're able to get there with Polk dancing in his, his way into the end zone. Career night for Jake Bobo through the air. Touchdown grabs, 127 yards, two touchdowns so far, Andre. Yeah, big time route runner, just snapping routes off. And the separation speed, the hands. He is the complete package, size to go along with it. Turning DBs around, spinning them like tops. You as John Jenkins would say. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. You asked me the question moments ago. Jake or Johnny, the numbers we've seen on Friday nights this year for those two standout receivers. Jumbo targets have been awfully impressive. Keegan Jones hit hard, driven down short of the 20. Well, we have UFC in Vegas. We have UFC in Vegas tomorrow night. Main event has Mackenzie Dern squaring off against the aggressive Jan Shanan. Dern recently said, gentlemen, everyone knows I can take a punch. Game on. Prelims are at 4 Eastern. Main card, 7 p.m. on ESPN+. Plus. Download the app. 
Ball. Good one. Sounds good. Makes me want to watch. Deep handoff. And a short gain on first down. Huskies looking for a stop. They'll get there to Charbonnet quickly. And Clark needs to go on the eye. I, I feel like he could. He's a world-class athlete. Yeah, he could do it. He's an All-American lacrosse player from Syracuse, if people don't know. I think so. It's a done deal if he brought his cross stick in. I don't want my face going through a meat grinder. <laughs> <laughs> the true renaissance man. Second down and six. Third down coming up. It'll be third and a long three for the Bruins. To stop right here. Haven't stopped the Bruins all night. No punts. No punts. Only stops came on two fourth downs where the Bruins came up a little bit short. Scored every possession other than the two that they didn't convert on fourth down. Charbonnet out. Keegan Jones in. Backfield empty for the time being for Dorian Thompson Robinson. He wants to throw it, and he does, and that's a first down. Jake Bobo stopped at the 40. With Cam Bright, the linebacker, and I've got a feeling it was right in the area he was supposed to be in, looked lost. And all of a sudden, Bobo comes open and converts on the first down. How big is that as the Bruins can just chew more time off the clock? And they are in absolutely no hurry now. 16 point lead for UCLA. First down, Kiv. And driven down quickly is Jones by Alex Cook. Nice job at safety coming up on his sixth year. He's the second leading tackler on this team coming into this ball game. He's the leader, according to co-defensive coordinators William Inge and Chuck Morrell. He's made a huge jump in his play from last year to this one. And all throughout fall camp. Super senior in Sacramento originally. Thompson Robinson's going to keep it. Roots one defender. And shut down to the 47 by Bruner. You guys were talking about Alex Cook. I had a good chat with him this week. Andre, you'll like this. You love hoops. He thought he'd be a college basketball player, but at 6'1", felt limited. So he explored a little bit more football. He's played his best ball in his fifth season, too. I mean, he's just a leader out there. He's a vocal guy. Well-rounded, too. He likes to snowboard. How many football guys like to snowboard? you got to be careful out there on the slopes doing no doubt. that. No doubt about it. Now, Bobo has been the third down target for Dorian Thompson Robinson tonight. Four third down catches all going for first. This time out of the backfield. Off the bobble and driven down. On third down, he's going to lose yardage. Well, it looks like they're going to force the first punt today. Or in this one with... About 8.40 left. First time we'll see the punter tonight. Nicholas Barmira trots out on the field. And Chip Kelly's in no hurry to send the unit out. He's going to wait until time runs down and send him out there with about 10 seconds or so. Big stretch of games coming up for the Bruins starting tonight. Utah comes to town next week, then a road trip to Oregon after an open date. Jackson waves for the fair catch. Huskies will get it back. Under eight minutes to go, trailing by two scores on the road. ESPN College Football is presented by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Well, look at some of the all-time greats play in Seattle. From Sonny Sixkiller all the way to Jake Browning. Great arms, great talents. A lot of championships have been won Love up at Husky Stadium. And tonight, look, the difference in this game, Michael Penix has been good, but the two picks were critical. You really were, and you look at it. Two touchdowns if you're able to score, and then a couple of two-point conversions, and 
This baby's knotted up. Still enough time to put together uh, the drive. They just got to hurry now. 49-yard punt. They put the Huskies deep in their own territory with a fair catch at the seven. Their last scoring drive took over six and a half minutes off the clock. Penix wide open for a first down and a lot more. Rumbling along the far side out of bounds is Talapapa. It's a gain of 34. Oh, excellent job. You get everybody sucked inside, and Talapapa is able to sneak out the back door. Penix, and the timing of the play is what makes it. Leading pass from the country now is thrown right at his season average. Approaching 350, this time on the ground. Two big plays already in UCLA territory. Good news for UCLA, though. Grayson Murphy, we saw him nicked up on that prior possession. Trainers taped his finger. He should be back in this game. His brother's out there right now, and the defense is stuck, and they're playing some tempo. Penix, pocket collapsing, and he goes down back at the 45. Bo Calvert. Just want to see Penix get up as he's bent and twisted all types of ways, but Calvert able to get there first. The two with an assist. Second sack of the night after a loss of seven. Penix quickly flings it across the middle and incomplete. It was dropped by McMillan spinning around. Well, and he doesn't do that very often. Sure handed receiver. I'd say he's the number one receiver on this team. And you just don't see McMillan drop passes like that. Huskies have two plays to pick up 16 yards to try to stay in it. Had a good chunk of it if McMillan held on to that one. Grayson Murphy back on the field, standing up as a pass rush with a dump off. Talapapa driven down, crossing midfield. Well, Kirkland's got to get a little bit of fire in him. A little too slow getting out to throw the block, and Talapapa couldn't wait all night. The result is he gets tackled. About 12 yards shy of the first down mark. Six-yard game, the tackle by Carl Jones. Huskies two for two on fourth down so far. And you got to protect long enough to allow routes to develop to pick up the 12 yards. Nixon, the running back. Time for Penix. That's a first down. He needed 12. He'll pick up 14 with Jalen Polk. Well, a nice job by Polk to get to the first down marker and the arm talent of Michael Penix Jr. on display once again. That's from the far hash to a comeback along the sideline all the way across the field. Washington needs two touchdowns and two two-point conversions to tie it. McMillan catches this one cleanly. Spun down inside the 20. Huskies in the red zone. The stop by Kirkwood. A gain of 16 more. Let's get the feeling that Washington should have gone to this a little bit earlier. The, that, the drive they scored on where they hit Culp in the back of the end zone should have been like this, a little bit faster pace. Westover in the flats. Westover with a first down. Spun out of bounds near the five. They'll rule him out at the seven. It'll be first and goal. Stop the clock. Allow the Huskies to, to huddle up. Washington, Andre, still with all three timeouts remaining. Under five and a half to go. Still got to hurry. It's called a muddle huddle where you just kind of huddle, get the play, and then right to the line of scrimmage. With your Penix, you're trying to find a matchup you like. Bunch formation, bottom of your screen. Penix will look that direction. Through his progressions, deflected, and that should have been caught by Polk. Yeah, he hit him right on the outside of the two in his chest. And I don't know that he could see through all the defenders. Late penalty marker comes out near the 15 after the play concluded. So all of a sudden, the ball's on his chest. What a throw. Penix felt like that one should have counted for a touch. After the play on Sportsman-like conduct, 
Offense number 73, his first of the game. 15 yard penalty, repeat first down. Rosengard. He's a second down. Be second down. He's had a long night. He's had Latou over him most of the night. He's trying to get Murphy out of the huddle. I don't know. I don't think it was Rosengarden. For the action. Murphy came down after the penalty. Nine infractions against the Huskies tonight for almost 100 yards. Second and goal. Screen pass. And Nixon races out of bounds. The clock will stop. Sykes drove him out. And they'll say that he actually was still inbounds with forward progress. Score here. Two-point conversion. Onside kick to try to get another possession. Third down and goal from the 14. All night for Penix. Now he'll take off. Penix will get a couple of yards, scampering out of bounds. A fourth down and goal from just inside the 10. Huskies are perfect on fourth down tonight. Three for three. Able to find Culp down here, the previous possession. It all comes down to this. McMillan in motion. Here comes the pressure. Penix delivers, and it's caught! Odunze grabs it for the touchdown. Well, the block by Talapapa against Latou gave Penix all the time that he needed. Excellent pickup by Talapapa. Watch him work left, give Penix the time necessary to chop down an edge defender and give him, give him the time to, to complete the football. Second touchdown reception for Rome Odunze. Brian Strother is the guy that he chopped down, but the little things make plays go. Huskies need the two-point conversion here. This would make it a one-score game. Penix rolls out. Penix delivers. And it's caught. McMillan's got it. 40 to 32. The arm talent of Penix is un unbelievable. It's the rollout. Short roll for Penix. Right, this is the touchdown pass in the back of the end zone. Adunze, and then the two-point conversion to McMillan, drawing Washington closer. Well, Pac-12 after dark delivers once again. A one-score game, less than four minutes to play. Penix is now thrown for 345 and four touchdowns. The question is now, if you're Washington, Kalen DeBoer, do you go where the onside kick here with three timeouts left? I think you, I thought so earlier, but the flow of the game, your defense forced to, forced to punt for the first time. I think you ride with them with the three timeouts. Bruins led by 24 with just over 12 minutes left tonight. That lead has been whittled down to eight. And the deep kick caroms into the end zone. Bruins will get it at their own 25. Don't forget this season, Allstate will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you once again. All state Huskies have all three timeouts left. Momentum perhaps on their side for the first time tonight defensively after forcing that punt. If you're Chip Kelly, what are you thinking about right now with Dorian Thompson Robinson? Well, you're trying to run the football out or run the clock down, and you're in your four minute offense, and that's to close out a game. And you don't necessarily need to score, but you need to milk the clock and get it down. So you go to Charbonnet here in the running game, trust the offensive line. Charbonnet racing ahead, stopped short of the 30-yard line. Be about a three, three and a half yard gain. Which if you're Washington, it's a little bit too much. They're going to spend that timeout. Time Washington, eight first seconds off the clock. This is a 30-second timeout. Zach Charbonnet has been, well, incredibly impressive. Three catches, 56 yards. He's over 115 yards on the ground as well. well just so reliable in all three phases. He's an excellent pass protector when he's in the game as well but you give him the football and things 
just happened. You watch him on film, and he just continues to emerge and make plays, and it's even better in real life, in real time. Now the big three for the Bruins, Bobo, Charbonnet, Thompson, Robinson, the numbers speak for themselves. The touchdowns, Thompson, Robinson, without a turnover, has been precise once again. Look at Bobo averaging 23.7 yards per grab. Amazing. And he's, you got to keep an eye on him. He's got a freshman on him now in green. Charbonnet already over the century mark on the ground for the 12th time in his career. You know, watching Zach Charbonnet, it's unbelievable how he finishes runs, and that was right on cue. I mean, he's just so powerful. His leg drive never stops. And Andre, you'll like this about Charbonnet. He's a golfer like you, man. Yeah. I'd love to see a match play between the two of you. Love it. Love it. I'd take him as a partner. Huskies call a timeout as we step aside. Crunch time in Pasadena when we return. Back in the Rose Bowl, a one-score game, less than four to play. Andre Ware, Paul Carcaterra, Roy Philpott, third down and one coming up for the Bruins. What would you call here, Andre? I'm giving it to Charbonnet. I mean, maybe even the last play they ran. Just right up the gut, rely on the offensive line. If I'm Chip, I'm telling them, hey, I need you to move some bodies and give this guy an avenue to one yard to pick up the first down. Unbalanced look for the Bruins. Charbonnet in the backfield. Dorian Thompson Robinson keeps it to the edge and the first down. That works too. When you have an athletic quarterback that can get the edge, you got everybody keyed in on Charbonnet and they take their eyes of Dorian Thompson Robinson just long enough for him to outflank the defense. That one's that one's gonna be painful. For you, Doe. Huskies with just one timeout remaining. Keegan Jones checks in for UCLA. And now the Bruins on the verge. One more first down will ice this game. But think about the potential of a 5-0 start. And certainly UCLA would be ranked when the new top 25 poll comes out Sunday afternoon. Thompson Robinson will keep it. Tiptoes out of bounds near midfield. Close to a first down. They're pretty much the same play other than Keegan Jones checked in there for the play fake as opposed to Charbonnet and like the ball security or the game in the hands of Dorian Thompson Robinson. Clock continues to tick down at 245 and counting. What a big time win this would be for Chip Kelly. Mentioned the potential to be in the top 25 with the new AP top 25 coming out Sunday. And arguably one of the biggest wins the Kelly era. For the Bruins off the right side a gain of one and now a timeout called the last for Washington. Well, if you're Chip Kelly you are telling your bunch ball security. I mean you cannot afford to have timeout. the ball pop out at this point half. in the ball game, especially where it is on the field. The other side, push the board. He's telling them, get the ball out. Or will tell them, figure out a way to get the ball on the ground. Your thoughts on seeing these two teams in person. Washington, I think, very deserving of a top 25 ranking even if it goes on to lose this game. And UCLA certainly belongs in there yeah. above the Huskies if this if this score holds. And no doubt. I think if, if it holds where it is, Washington obviously is going to drop. But UCLA, I felt like, should have been a top 25 team before tonight. With the start they had to the season and the way they've looked, uh, I think it's it's more even more apparent now that they will be if, this, if they were able to hold on here. Huskies out of timeout, second down and nine. Robo races in motion. Charbonnet fake the handoff his direction. And Dorian Thompson Robinson needs to do his best to stay in bounds. They'll keep the clock rolling as the forward progress was stopped. And we're still up two minutes to go here. He is still competing. 
trying to run guys over to stay in bounds, keep the clock running for as long as he can, and then he's going to let the guy know that that he took on about it, let him know about it afterwards. Bruins can snap this football. We've seen that look all night. Oh, we long, have, haven't we? Just about one minute and 32 seconds left, and they may call a timeout here. And laser focus. The DTR. Amazing performance tonight. Timeout. Third down and five. It's a 30 second timeout. Clock operator, please reset. Mention the importance of getting this win for the Bruins tonight, considering what's on the horizon. Utah comes down here to Pasadena next Saturday, and then a road trip to Eugene. And SC waiting there towards the end of November. Who knows what kind of implications that game could have, both in the Pac-12 and maybe on a bigger scale if things keep going in Chip Kelly's favor this season. That's really the next two weeks are going to be tough for the Bruins. Utah to overcome a, a loss at Florida. And then, you know, at Oregon, that's always a tough trip. Loud stadium. Well, the Ducks Chip have gotten a lot better. Chip essentially going back to the place that uh, he got his, his head coaching start. Third and six, Charbonnet motions out. Screams quarterback run, instead they'll throw it, pass is caught. And that will be enough for the first down and the Bruins are gonna win this one. And guess who? Habermill. Hudson Sunglass, Habermill. And I mean, perfect distance to the first down mark. But originally he was going to be about half a yard shy, but he caught it just past the 40 yard line, which is just enough to give him the first down. UCLA will improve to 5 and 0. The winning streak reaches eight games dating back to last season. And Dorian Thompson Robinson has announced his arrival once again in year number five onto the national scene for the Bruins. The toughness, the accuracy, the leadership, awfully impressive for the fifth year senior. Threw for over 300 yards once again tonight. But most importantly, on the scoreboard, the final score. UCLA 40, Washington 32. First loss of the season for the Huskies. Oh, what a game. And I think Jordan Thompson Robinson took it personally with a guy coming into his, his home field, his stadium. Paul Carcaterra has Chip Kelly. Coach, where were you challenged the most in that second half? I don't know if it was the second half. It's just a game. They're, that quarterback's really good. That offense is really good. We didn't think we were going to keep them down for the whole game. They made some great catches. Um, but our guys battled them. We made enough plays to win in the second half. What's it like for you when you came to UCLA? It was Dorian Thompson Robinson's first year. The maturation, the development from your vantage point, what's that like for you to see? Well, you look at the last play of the game. We put it in his hands. He made a great decision uh, and helped us win the football game. He's just, every week he gets better and better and better. And that's from when he got here five years ago to now. So we got stuff we got to clean up, but we'll continue to build on it. You told me yesterday you were impressed with the overall student athletes that you had on this team. 20 guys already graduated, books and ball. They're taking care of things in the classroom. In the field, though, what's been the difference this year compared to prior years? It's been a race to maturity, and I think we got a really mature football team. And they, they had a, they, we needed it today. We needed every single second of it today. So um, really proud of how these guys, how they responded. Thank you, Coach. All right, thanks, Paul. Yeah, great turnout tonight for this Pac-12 game against Washington. The Huskies undefeated no more. Dorian Thompson Robinson, we talked about his toughness and Chip Kelly told us this week, he's the toughest player on the team. And Andre, it's plays like what you're getting ready to see. They're the reasons why he does everything for the Bruins. Yeah, and the passing game, he delivered. Uh, he's got a, a pitch where he's a lead, turns into pretty much a lead blocker throwing blocks down the field. 
then breaking up a potential interception at a critical time in the game, leaping over defenders, putting on his cape. He did everything tonight and led his team to a big time win. And the big three showed up in a major way. Career high in reception yards for Jake Bobo. Career high in touchdown grabs for Jake Bobo. Charbonnet, 12th time in his career. He's gone over the century mark on the ground. And then Dorian Thompson Robinson over 300 yards through the air. Sixth time he's achieved that number in his illustrious UCLA career. Let's Jake Bobo, the route runner. Let's take a look at him. I mean, a guy that is an outstanding route runner, can get separation at 6'5", about 215 pounds, excellent hands. Hey, he's as fine a receiver as we've seen this season of getting himself open. And then after the catch, being a little slippery with just enough to get in the end zone. What a night for Jake Bobo. Huskies will regroup. They'll go back on the road next week at Arizona State. And right now with that eighth consecutive victory for the Bruins, that ties Kentucky for the second longest streak in America at this late hour. And boy, this is just the table setter for what should be an incredible weekend of college football. Clemson, NC State tomorrow, Florida State, Wake Forest, and a host of other matchups. They're going to have massive implications. I'm not ready to move on from this one. This right. is one we had circled on the calendar. I think it lived up to expectations. We had great quarterback play. We've seen some stars that were, you know, talked about, but really rose to the occasion. And Charbonnet, I don't think we, you know, he, he may not have gotten enough credit for what he did and at critical times in the game delivering over and over again. You know, the Bruins with a statement win at home and now improving to 5-0 and the young season, 2-0 and in the Pac-12. The Huskies fall to 4-1 and one and 1-1 one and one in league play. Fun night, good atmosphere, which turned out to be a whale of a football game. Final score once again, UCLA 40, Washington 32 for Andre Ware and Paul Carcaterra. I'm Roy Philpott saying thanks for watching and good night from the Rose Bowl.